Good morning. Thank you, Sue, for that introduction. And Sharif and Janet, so fantastic to hear your perspective. Really appreciate that. Um, if you're attending here today in the room or virtually this Digital Ethics Summit, you're already well on your way to achieving the aptly titled goal of this event, seizing the moment. Although this event is in its seventh year, this is indeed a moment by any measure. I am sure many of you are like me in that in the months since we've had more broadly available generative AI powered services and experiences, it's a I remember where I was moment. Show of hands, anyone remember where they were the first time they used ChatGPT or any of these generative AIs? Lots of hands up. And I can guess with a higher degree of certainty that each of you can remember the first questions you've asked that generative AI service, service and realize the power and impact of large language models. Mine was in February earlier this year when I was visiting my now 98 year old grandmother in Florida. I asked for a poem about my granny who enjoys tea and lives by the sea. Much to my delight and to hers, uh, what came out was a wonderfully entertaining and accurate poem in about three stanzas, but just with a few inputs. Catching on quickly and not missing a trick, she then cheekily asked me, I was wondering if you could ask it to write me a thank you note to you for that poem. What, generate, what was generated, we both agreed, was equally impressive. My life as a prompter had just begun, as I assume it had for you too. So in this moment, where to focus? Certainly this event comes at a crucial time for the UK and for the world but I can understand the feeling of a thousand tentacles. What I hope to offer are some perspectives to help us take stock and gain clarity as we prepare for the opportunities ahead. And I thought you might be interested in Microsoft's own journey to date to both help provide context and normalize the experiences we're likely all sharing now. The spoiler alert is of course that this didn't happen overnight and we don't have all the answers. Indeed, this moment right now is one that feels like overnight, but it's also that classic case that it's been building for some time. And this moment comes after decades of learning and experimentation. We all probably remember when we had that first experience of seeing a web address at the dawn of the internet or our first smartphone at the dawn of the mobile era. My first memory of what we now experience daily as AI had to have been Microsoft's flawed Taybot a bot that within hours of release became extremely racist based on the public's prompting and was swiftly taken down. I do think it's helpful therefore to think how long this dawn of the era of AI has been upon us to inform our current state and help us chart our path forward. Over seven years ago in June 2016, Satya Nadella wrote an article in Slate magazine entitled The Partnership of the Future. With the byline, Microsoft CEO explores, explores how humans and AI can work together to solve society's greatest challenges. It explored how this is a partnership with AI, assistive to humans augmenting their abilities. It proposed principles and goals for discussion and debate that we will all recognize now in 2023 in this moment, safeguarding, transparency, privacy, accountability, and guarding against bias. It also highlighted the role our key human skills will play that are not easily replicated by machines, such as empathy, creativity, and judgment. It proposed the topic of debate not to be good versus evil, but the values instilled in the people and institutions creating the technology. I'll paraphrase this by saying, machines aren't unethical, aren't unethical humans are but we can use our values to ensure that technology we create has sensitivity to things that matter ethically. So what do we make of this new dawn, this new AI era in 2023, so many years after it began? Two key observations I'd like to propose, one about reach and one about threat. In terms of reach, and to state the obvious, a broader group of people across the world now understand AI, just as we've heard from Sharif and Janet. It's one thing to have a smartphone and apps that use AI in the background, but moving from standard blue link searching to using Bing Chat or ChatGPT search powered by large language models truly brings to life the power of AI to be your co-pilot, to write a speech, not this one, uh, plan a vacation, 
find a source of uh, something that's otherwise unfindable and truly bring to the forefront the potential of in our everyday life and work. ChatGPT took two months to be used by 100 million users, five times faster than it took TikTok to reach the same amount of users, and 15 times faster than Instagram. The ubiquity has felt almost instant. Investors certainly have already recognized this opportunity and the value of generative AI. By 2025, it's estimated that the annual private sector investment will approach 200 billion around the world. Investors are rushing in to advance AI because AI can play a potentially transformative role in the way we live our lives, the way our economy operates, and the way our public services are delivered. Turning to the other key observation, from a threat perspective, it's notable that while the pace of AI adoption is accelerated, so has the opportunity for misuse by bad actors. The increasing speed, scale, and sophistication of cyber attacks demand a new approach to security. Traditional tools are no longer enough to keep pace with the threats posed. In just two years, the number of password attacks detected by Microsoft has risen from 579 per second to more than 4,000 per second. The UK is the second most targeted European country per volume observed cyber threat activity, costing business and disrupting public services. In recent years, a cyber attack on the NHS affecting more than 80 hospitals, trusts, and almost one in 10 GP practices cost nearly 100 million and led to 19,000 canceled appointments. Security teams face an asymmetric challenge. They have to protect everything, while cyber attackers only need to find one weak point. And security teams must do this while facing regulatory complexity, a global talent shortage, and rampant fragmentation. To address the challenge, Microsoft combines the ability to review 65 trillion daily signals with expertise of global threat intelligence, monitoring more, monitoring more than 300 cyber, th cyber threat groups, combined with insights on cyber attacker behaviors from more than 1 million customers and 15,000 partners. Microsoft, Microsoft believes that this is a shared responsibility across teams and organizations. Yet many don't share the same tools or data. They don't often collaborate with one another. As the digital domain faces new and more threatening challenges, defenders are being driven to innovate and collaborate more closely than ever. And governments have a duty to keep pace with the development of future threats as well. With increased reach and societal impact for good, we need to focus with equal determination on the challenges and risks that AI can create and we need to manage them effectively. This is one of the most important lessons that we learned from the rise of social media. Little more than a decade ago, technologists and political commentators praised the role of social media in spreading democracy during the Arab Spring, something I think we'll all remember well. Yet in the years since the Arab Spring, we learned that social media, like so many other technologies before it, would become both a weapon and a tool. In this case, aimed at democracy itself. We now need to put that wisdom to work and apply lessons we have learned. We must anticipate the problems that could lie ahead. As technology moves forward, it's important to ensure proper control over it. It's just as important to ensure proper control over AI as it is to pursue its benefits. We are committed and determined as a company to develop and deploy AI in a safe and responsible way. So let's return back to what's happened um, after Satya's vision in his Slate article. What it set in motion was the beginning of our core AI principles and Microsoft's investment to ensure AI systems were responsibly designed. We by no means have all the answers, but I'll briefly describe what happened next and where our journey has taken us through today, and it's a journey we continue. In 2018, we adopted six ethical principles, accountability, inclusiveness, reliability and safety, fairness, transparency, privacy and security, and one bedrock principle that comes above everything else, accountability. This is the fundamental need to ensure that machines remain subject to effective oversight by people 
and that the people who design and operate machines remain accountable to everyone else. In short, we must ensure that AI remains under human control. In 2019, we founded a sensitive use review program to subject our most sensitive use, uh, novel uses of AI to rigorous specialized review that resulted in tailored guidance. Since then, we've completed over 600 sensitive use case reviews. The pace of this activity has quickened to match the pace of AI advance advances. And more broadly over the years, Microsoft advanced responsible AI through company culture, committed to the principles and responsibilities of a that we needed to approach um, AI. Although every individual at Microsoft contributes to our mission and goals, we do have people specialized in this area. Microsoft currently has nearly 350 people working so solely in our Office of Responsible AI, based in jurisdictions around the world. They are responsible for implementing the best practices around building safe, secure, and transparent AI systems designed to benefit society. While our responsible AI principles state the enduring values we seek to uphold, we, need to be, we needed more specific guidance on how to build and deploy AI systems responsibly. This is why we developed our Responsible AI Standard, a more practical guide that lays out the rules of the road for our teams so that upholding our AI principles is a daily practice. And we didn't stop there. We've now open sourced the standard and published as a part of our AI customer commitments. It can be easily found by searching Microsoft AI customer commitments. It's a blog that's different than any other blog you've seen from us probably in that it has really deep links that go to the standard. And we've also disclosed our impact assessment templates and guidance, our transparency notes, and detailed primers on the implementation of our responsible AI design by design approach. Our hope, and certainly what I hear anecdotally, is that this is helping others to leap, leapfrog years of work and provide a foundation on which they can build. Turning from design to the important topic of future governance of AI, this last May, to contribute to the global debate of how to, we should best govern AI, we released a white paper called Governing AI, A Blueprint for the Future. This was built on lessons we learned from many years of investment and thoughtful input from individuals in offices around the world. It outlines our belief that there needs to be a legal and regulatory architecture for AI that reflects the technology architecture of AI itself. In short, the law will need to place various regulatory responsibilities upon different actors based on their role in managing the different aspects of AI technology. It proposes that different laws place specific regulatory responsibilities on organizations exercising certain responsibilities at three layers of the technology stack. The top layer, the applications layer, the middle layer, the model layer, and the infrastructure layer at the bottom. This should first apply existing legal protections at the application layer to the use of AI. This is a layer where safety and rights of people will be most impacted, especially because the impact of AI can vary markedly in different technology scenarios. In many areas, we don't need new laws and regulations. We instead need to apply and enforce existing ones helping agencies and courts develop the expertise needed to, to, new, to approach new AI scenarios. However, we will need to develop new laws and regulations for highly capable AI foundation models, best implemented by a new government agency. This will impact two layers of the technology stack. The first will require new regulations and licensing for these models themselves. The second will involve the obligations for the AI infrastructure operators on which these models are developed and deployed. The blueprint offers suggested goals and approaches for each of these layers. And the blueprint builds in part on principles developed in recent decades. In banking to protect against money laundering and criminal terrorist use of financial services, we'll all recognize the know your customer approach, or KYC. This requires that financial services institutions verify customer identities establish risk profiles, and monitor transactions to help detect suspicious activity. It would make sense to take this principle and apply it and build on it and create something called K3KY3C, 
This approach uh, in the AI context creates certain obligations to know one's cloud, one's customer, and one's content. By adopting a responsible approach to AI governance based on three levels of the stack, applications, models, and infrastructure, we can keep pace with the future security demands. Today, you will have the chance to discuss and debate the critical steps ahead for responsible AI governance. The decisions we take, both today and in the weeks, months, and years to come, will help shape the trajectory of AI development and deployment and frame the potential opportunities for us all. This is a business and societal imperative with real impact and outcomes for our communities and for our people. And I think it's worthwhile to pause on just one illustrative example today in the NHS, which I thought Sharif so thoughtfully raised. NHS staff at Adam Brooks Hospital in Cambridge are using AI to drastically cut waiting times for radiotherapy patients. The new AI system called OSIRIS has revolutionized the prepar preparation of scans, reducing the time patients must wait between referral and treatment initiation. Dr. Raj Jenna, the researcher who led the project said, OSIRIS does much of the work in the background so that when the oncologist sits down to start planning treatment, most of the heavy lifting is done. This first cloud-based AI technology to be developed and deployed within the NHS is not an overnight development. And like technological success that came before it, the development of the OSIRIS technology is built on decade-long research collaboration between the Cambridge-based Microsoft Research and, Ad and Adambrook itself called Project InterEye. And to fuel innovation in this space in the decade to come, in September 2020, Microsoft Research made the InterEye software available as open source to broaden access to the technology. The research team demonstrated how models built using these toolkits cut preparation time by up to 90%, dramatically reducing waiting times for starting potentially life-saving radiotherapy treatment. This is a profound example that demonstrates that it's not just highly skilled professionals that will benefit from AI, but that it has the potential to take humanity forward in a way that truly reaches everyone. We want to democratize access to AI, enabling every person and every organization to achieve more. An approach that we feel addresses the problems faced here and now, as well as the ones found in the future. We know that this will lead to more trustworthy AI systems that benefit not only our customers, but the whole of society. We are acutely aware that people do not use technology they do not trust. AI does not exist in a vacuum, so to successfully and sustainably govern the safe and secure deployment of AI, interoperability will be essential. We recognize, therefore, that guardrails needed for AI require a broadly shared sense of responsibility and should not be left to technology companies alone. That's why in January, we signed up to the White House voluntary commitments. Those commitments aim to ensure that advanced AI systems are safe, secure, and trustworthy. They address the risks presented by advanced AI models and promote the adoption of specific practices, such as red team testing and the publication of transparency reports that will advance the whole environment that constitutes AI. Since then, significant advances have been made in the last year, since you've last been here for this event, on the international consensus on AI, from the Hiroshima Protocol and the UK government's AI Safety Summit and Bletchley Declaration, to the UA US government's AI Executive Order and the EU's AI Act, and the Japanese government's AI Bill. While this international consensus builds, we must ensure that everyone has the skills and resources to reap the benefits of AI here in the UK. This requires all of us to keep one hand on the wheel, delivering for the UK on a daily basis, while we continue to accelerate on our longer term global goals. That's why at Microsoft we've committed to our AI skills commitment, announcing earlier in the autumn that we will aim to train 1 million people with skills they need to build and work with AI by 2025. That's why we're investing 2.5 billion in a UK data center infrastructure over the next three years to bring more than 20,000 of the most advanced GPUs to the UK by 2026. And finally, that's why we're making up to 150 uh, 
thousand worth of Azure credits um, for each startup depending on their usage so that they can get going with their work. In conclusion, the ethical deployment of AI is not just a choice. It's an imperative that we know we share with many of you and that defines our collective commitment to a responsible and sustainable technological future. By prioritizing safety, security, and trust, we can navigate the complexities of AI deployment with a moral compass. As tech leaders, we have the privilege and responsibility to shape the development and deployment of AI in our society. So let us seize this opportunity to create a future where technology serves, serves human, humanity ethically, enhances our lives, and fosters a world that values innovation guided by principles. I am looking forward to hearing all of our distinguished speakers today and learning alongside you as we build this future together. Thank you.